is made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Magnify the Lord with me and let us start his name together. God is a good God. A great God, a great King above all God. And we are grateful for yet another opportunity, another moment to extend to you this worship experience. Thank you for allowing us onto your mobile devices, into your homes, and more importantly, into your hearts, into your minds, into your lives, your spirits. I'm Pastor Joe, we are Refuge Church of God in Christ. Of course, we bring you greetings from our senior leader, Superintendent Joseph T. Williams, his lovely wife, First Lady Linda Williams. I salute you from my beautiful wife, Lady Ashley Williams. I'm just I'm grateful to God for being able to be with you. Even though virtually, even though we're not allowed or afforded the opportunity to be in the physical presence of one another, we are in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, King of Kings, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords. Troubles vanish, hearts are managed in the presence of the King. Scripture today is going to come from Genesis, the 32nd chapter, beginning at verse number 24. Please continue to keep us in your prayers as we are continuing to pray for you that God's most excellent will be executed in your life. Verse 24, and Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed, not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men prevail. Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. He said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And he passed over Penuel. As he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him. He halted <coughs> upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the sinew that shrank. God's word is so rich, powerful, and blessed. I fought for today is I'm just different. I'm just different. We thank you, God, that you allow us to partake of your divine holiness by consuming the word which was made flesh dwelt among us. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. We thank you God that you have prepared that word for your people. Prepare now your people to receive your word and that the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength, rock, and redeemer. Amen. Even killed person. I must admit that I have been in my feelings and my emotions much more than usual over the past few days. I was extremely godly, proud of the Milwaukee Bucks for leading the charge of boycotting during the NBA playoff bubble due to the injustice that had taken place in their home state of Wisconsin. I was equally proud of the other NBA teams and professional sports organizations that followed suit. The boycott was a direct result to the general spirit of racial injustice that permeates America today, and more specifically, due to another shooting of an unarmed African-American man. 
Kenosha Washington, Jacob Blake was shot at seven times, four of them striking him in his back while the white police officer grabbed his shirt from behind. Blake is now partially paralyzed and currently handcuffed to his hospital bed while he is in recovery. I'm somewhat ashamed to say that this action by the police is not really what moved my emotions fully. I, like many of you, have become somewhat desensitized to the myriad of police shootings and killings that litter our social media feeds and airwaves. Instead, I was moved by what I witnessed just a few days later as 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed two protesters who were trying to help apprehend him from an earlier shooting. I was horrified as I watched Rittenhouse kill two people and then walk right past the police with his recently discharged weapon strapped around his body and his hands in the air. The man that killed two people was able to leave the scene unscathed and unharmed. He was able to sleep in his own bed that night. He was able to escape imminent danger after being an imminent danger to multiple people not facing arrest until the next day. And while he was subsequently apprehended and arrested the following day, what grabbed me at the time was the fact that the armed man who killed two people was able to walk away freely, while the unarmed man who killed no one may never walk again. The major difference between the two, one was white and one was black. This difference has been the most divisive force in the United States of America. Millions of people have died because of this difference. Millions of people have suffered because of this difference. Millions of people have dealt with both insult and injury because of this difference. But I want you to hear me, and that is when you understand that differences are powerful, that a difference is what is left or what remains after something has been subtracted from you or taken away from you, then you will understand that although we have differences in differences, we find both identity and we can also find strength. It is here now where the word of God helps add clarity to this truth as our subject also features a man named Jacob. He is the son of Isaac, the promised child, the grandson of Abraham, the father of our faith, and the last of the three people which God chose to stake his identity upon. As God comes to us in the Old Testament as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a very lofty thing to be part of the title which God himself chooses to use to identify himself. And if you understand what the name Jacob means, if you understand who Jacob was and the things that he did, I'm hoping that you will find encouragement because Jacob was really not the type of man who would seem to qualify for his eternal status. The name Jacob means trickster. Jacob was a conniver. Jacob was a man who operated in trickery and deception and even doubt. But there is something special about his life and that is God loved him anyway. Pastor, I thought that you were preaching about Jacob, but that sounds exactly like my testimony. I don't know if you understand how it is having made your bed in a world of sin, having lied sometimes, played some people, tricked, doubted, and even been on the right side of wrong decisions. But the truth is, in spite of my negative resume, there is something about me that Jesus is crazy about. And I don't know if you understand, but I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But the thing that I can celebrate is I'm so glad that he did. That songwriter began to interrogate to himself, where would I be if Jesus didn't love me? Where would I be if Jesus didn't care? Where would I be 
if he did not sacrifice his life. Oh, but I'm glad that he did. He loves me especially different. Every time he keeps me on my feet, happily excited by his hands, his, his smile, his intelligence. I feel you, Miss Jill Scott. You were singing about Lazel, but I'm preaching about the Lord God Almighty, the Lord strong and mighty in battle. He is the King of glory, and I'm so excited, and I hope you got some heart emojis right now. Well, that you can testify with me that the king loves me. And so here is this man who seems not to have the qualifying resume for the person that God was saying, I'm going to put my name on, but God loved Jacob. And it's significant because Jacob was born with a twin brother. His brother's name was Esau, and as the proud father of twin daughters, I have witnessed firsthand the dichotomy and tension that often develops from having shared your entire existence with a person and trying to develop your own sense of self, your own identity, to highlight your own differences. The Bible teaches us that even in the womb, these boys were trying to establish their own identities and establish themselves as individuals. And as they grew, we find that they developed into interesting men and their differences became stark contrast one with the other. Esau was a hairy man who would call him unkempt. So, and that was in large degree due to the fact that Esau was what is called in the Bible a cunning hunter. He was what we would call a man's man, while Jacob is described in the word of God as a plain man. Jacob is the person who dwelt in tents. He stayed inside, evidently by his mother's side, because the Bible makes it clear that his mother, Rebecca, loved Jacob, while Esau was loved by his father. It's significant because as the oldest son in a Hebrew family, Esau was to have the birthright of the family bestowed upon him. But some type of way, his mother, Rebecca, and his younger brother, Jacob, conspired to have it bestowed upon Jacob. And they were able to trick Isaac into giving Jacob the birthright that belonged to Esau. And as one might imagine, Esau becomes incensed about this particular transaction and wanted to enact revenge upon his brother. So what happened was Jacob fled from the family. And by the time we pick up, pick up our text in Genesis 32, years have passed with Jacob still on the run. While he was in exile, if you will, from his family, Jacob took wives. Jacob had children. Jacob had become a successful man, but found himself in a position where it was better for him to leave where he was than to stay in the current state of success where he was living. Sometimes, I would even often say, most times, this seems to be how God operates in the life of the believer. Maybe you have built a life somewhere, a ministry, a foundation, an occupation for yourself someplace. And God says, ah, even though you've done well, I'm calling you to something greater. I'm calling you to something more. I'm calling you to something better. And as good as it has been, as well established as you may have been here, sometimes it requires leaving good in order for you to pursue and capture greatness. Sometimes it requires leaving people and places behind in order to pursue that higher calling that is on and over 
your life. Well, the challenge and tension of the text was that in order for Jacob to get where God wanted to take him, he not only had to leave where he was, his father-in-law, his father-in-law's house. He not only had to leave where he was, but he had to navigate through what Jacob believed was enemy territory. Jacob had to face his fears and travel through the land of Edom, which was primarily occupied by Esau, his brother, who also had wives and children and was great in his own right. It's a significant piece of the story because sometimes leaving becomes scary for us. Sometimes taking on the new adventure is something that we meet with trepidation. But sometimes in order for you to be what God has for you to be, you've got to trust him beyond what you see. And so Jacob decides that he's going to send word ahead telling Esau that he's coming up through. And being the shrewd man that Jacob was, he didn't just send the words alone, but he thought it best to accompany the word with an offering. I keep finding this point in my teachings in this season. But hear me, people of God, whenever you operate in fear and not faith, you will end up paying the price. Anytime fear is over, the faith that you have, you will end up paying a price for things that you already have the power to. To avoid. God works things, as people say, in mysterious ways. And faith is the mechanism that attracts blessings to your life. While fear is the mechanism that will subtract blessings of Eve. And while Jacob tries to offer Esau a peace offering that he hopes to settle their differences. What happens is Jacob is met with the word that big brother is on his way to meet him. This simply sends Jacob into a panic. The Bible specifically says he was greatly afraid and distressed. And my brothers and sisters, in the interest of time making a long story a short one, we find that Jacob began to separate his people and his possessions into camps so that if Esau were to attack and take some of them, the rest of them would have a greater chance of escape. And all of this takes place by the time we get to our text and find that Jacob now has separated himself. He is left alone. And while he is alone, he finds himself in a wrestling match that lasted all night long. And it appears that the match was a stalemate. And so the man with whom Jacob was wrestling decided he was going to use a subtle trickery technique. And he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and knocked it out of joint. Yet even though Jacob was injured in the fight, Jacob made a decision. I'm going to get up from here facing the potential of death tomorrow. So even though you've injured me, I'm not going to get up until you bless me. I don't know about you, but in this climate that we are facing today, we never know what tomorrow is going to hold. You don't know what the news cycle is going to be when you wake up. And if you knew that it was going to be a day where you were going to have to look death in the face, you would have a spiritual resolve to say, God, if I got to face it, I'm going to need you to send that blessing before I got to go into the enemy's camp. I know some of us understand because we've been severely injured in the wrestling match and fight that we're in. But we've got to hold on to and demand a blessing that will come in our lives. And here it is that the blessing was revealed when the guy that was wrestling with Jacob only began to tell Jacob 
uh, the reality of what Jacob all already knew. Uh, you wrestled with God. Uh, you wrestled with man. Uh, and you are yet still alive. Uh, you have uh, prevailed. Uh, to somebody under the sound of my voice, uh, you've been wrestling with God. Uh, you've been wrestling with some people. Uh, but the fact that you've got breath still yet in your body uh, simply means that you have uh, prevailed. Uh, and you need to know uh, that the blessing you are seeking uh, is simply uh, going to reveal to you uh, who you all are ready are. You didn't realize that when you went through the trial that you just came out of, that it was just so God could show you that you are a survivor. You didn't realize that after you were rejected by your brothers and sisters, it was just so God could reveal that you are anointed. You didn't realize there's a champion in you. There's an overcomer in you, that you are more, more than a conqueror. How else could you and people that look like you and people that look like me survive four centuries of wrestling with both the spiritual and the natural forces of white supremacy and still find a way to become entrepreneurs and inventors, musicians, teachers, judges, athletes, doctors, lawyers, owners, millionaires, and billionaires. You need to know that you have survived the wrestling match with white supremacy, the wrestling match with socioeconomic disadvantages, the wrestling match with poverty and abuse. And all you need to know is that you are already blessed. Jacob was already blessed. But even when you're blessed, you cannot stay exactly where you are. The Bible says that Jacob wrestled all night long, but then he had to get up because the sun was shining on him. You didn't know that the season of weeping is over because weeping may endure for a night. Oh, but joy is coming in the morning. And as Jacob got up, realizing that the break had come in the day, the Bible says he halted on his hip, which means that Jacob realized there's something different about me now. In the fight, I cannot walk the same the way that I used to walk. I've been injured in the battle. My steps are not the same as they used to be. I've been injured in the struggle. Everybody sees me, and I'm a little bit different from this day forward. They will all know there's a change in me. But what you need to know is that. Sometimes uh, the very thing uh, that caused you pain, uh, the very thing uh, that caused you injury, uh, the very thing uh, that caused you to limp uh, is simply just evidence uh, of the blessing in your life. Uh, well, now I walk different, uh, but it's proof that my name has changed. Uh, I talk different, uh, it's proof there's a calling on my life. Uh, I cannot move the way I used to move. That just means there's an anointing in my spirit. And the Bible says, and the angel says, I gotta do something. I gotta make you different. I gotta change your nature. And I gotta change your name so that everyone will know there's a difference about you to all of my Jacobs. You've been injured, but it made you stronger. To Jacob Blake, they tried to take you out. You might walk different, but there's a blessing attached to your name. To Jacob in the Bible, you wrestle with God. You never walk the same, but you're blessed beyond measure. I hope I got some Jacobs in the house. Some Jacobs. Go ahead and type, I'm a J.
Jacob to all of my Jacobs. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it injured me. Yes, it caused me pain. Yes, I'm forever different. But my difference is my evidence. I'm so sorry you don't look this good. But my difference is my evidence. My difference is the fact that you ain't me and I'm not you my difference is the fact that I'm blessed to bless to remain stressed I'm powerful too powerful to remain weak I'm mighty and amazing like my daddy I hear you Mari you are you are the father the
that which was supposed to take me out just made me stronger. You need to hear me today. You are a winner. You are stronger. You are greater. Because greater is he that lives in you. He that is in the world. Do not be afraid to allow God to move you from what's comfortable and place you in what's uncomfortable because it's in the uncomfortable season, the place and time in your life where he's going to change you and make you better. Don't you be discouraged in this season. Keep your eyes on the prize. Allow your faith to conquer your fear and watch God work a change in your life. Father, we thank you for every person, family, household represented today. And this word will take root in their spirits and lives. And that you will cause the necessary change to happen in our lives to propel us to the greatest season that we could ever enjoy. We decree miracles and blessings, favor and prosperity right now over everybody watching, everybody who is connected to the people that are watching that your power will fall, as your name is called, prove the doubters wrong. God, you are mighty and strong. Lord, you are mighty and we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Thank you so much for continuing to support the ministry. Continue to support us with your prayers as we are praying for you. We're expecting double. So we ask you to tag, to like, to share with at least one person, because you, plus a friend, is double. Continue to support financially, cash tag, and cash app, cash symbol refuge, C-O-G-I-C, -C. cash symbol refuge, C-O-G-I-C, -C, where you can send that wonderful text, keyword refuge, just to to 77977. I'm expecting to hear great testimonies of a great week for you. Please don't offer any hesitation if you need us for anything. God's richest blessings be upon you. In the name of Jesus, amen.